January. It was just November. What the heck? Whatever. Um, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us at Secular AZ today. For those of us who are joining today, please, if you're in the webinar, feel free to put your name in the chat. Make sure that you click everyone so that everyone can see who you are. Let us know who you are, where you're from, uh, or if you want to do so on Facebook Live, we are live on Facebook. We are a nonprofit organization focused on protecting the Constitution and the separation of church and state for over a decade. We have some incredible programming, including our Friday updates from all kinds of amazing speakers. We have historians, authors, elected officials, clergy, <laughs> journalists, uh, you know, and, and next week, we're going to have a journalist, uh, Garnett Han Henderson, who's going to join us to discuss her reporting on the myths and disinformation swirling around about contraceptives, which right now, especially given the, the two different decisions we've seen from, I think, Washington and Texas, this is an important conversation to have. But after that, we're putting together another series about abuse that's happening in some religious organizations with some really incredible speakers. So if you'd like to uh, join us, please make sure you sign up. And I hope that all of you will support the work that we do here at secularaz.org and become a recurring donor to support our work at the legislature, at school boards, with our action alerts, et cetera. As a matter of fact, I was just at the Peoria Unified School District last night uh, talking a little bit in my speech about the rise of Christian nationalist board members and how they're trying to destroy our public schools from within. So plug in on all of our social media. But for now, I am super excited because we have a real live uh, a, a community uh, organizer, uh, a public servant in our midst. Pastor Redeem Robinson is a pastor, activist, former school board member, and community organizer. He's the uh, founder and community pastor of the All Souls Movement based in Los Angeles, California, which is an inclusive faith-based movement to create space for spiritual healing and deconstruction, as well as taking on social justice issues and doing community outreach. Uh, uh, Reverend Robinson has a passion for fighting for justice and equal rights, fighting against poverty, being the voice for the oppressed and standing up to those who wish to oppress others. Reverend Robert Robinson has worked on political campaigns for federal and statewide races and helped organize around immigrant rights, police accountability, voting rights, climate change, LGBTQ plus rights, and the impeachment of Donald Trump with Next Gen America's Need to Impeach campaign. He is an advocate for public education and was elected as governing board member. That was with that that is with the Bald School District, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Uh, it's just my passion. I love school board stuff, you know. In November of 2022, Reverend Robinson was appointed to be a commissioner on the LA County Commission on HIV by the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, where he brings his 10 years of HIV AIDS ministry experience to the table. Along with Reverend Robinson's ministry work at All Souls Movement, he is pursuing a certificate in public theology at the Berkeley School of Theology. His main focus focus, and this is what I love, is on dealing with Christian nationalism and reparations for African Americans from a biblical perspective. So welcome, Reverend. Is there anything that I missed uh, from your bio? No, no, no. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, well, we're more than happy to. And so I am just going to hand it right off to you, because I know that everybody wants to hear what you have to say. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it is great to be with you all. Uh, Secular AZ is actually one of my favorite organizations um, in Arizona. I've had the uh, the honor to uh, to work with Secular AZ um, during my time in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's great to be with you all. And um, yeah, let's go into it. Today, we are going to talk about uh, Christian nationalism and um, and um, I don't mean to sound like an alarmist, but I really feel like Christian nationalism is one of the greatest threats um, to this country. And today, pretty much, um, I'm going to be sharing um, just information about Christian, nas Christian nationalism, um, why it's a threat and everything, um, mostly from a perspective of a Black Christian, a Black progressive Christian. Um, who also identifies as queer. Um, so yeah, this is the, the perspectives that you're going to be getting uh, today. Uh, yeah, so I have a presentation for you all. 
And we're going to watch a couple clips too, because um, I feel like I cannot show you what Christian nationalism is, me personally, but I will have to actually like, like actually show you all what Christian nationalism really is. Uh, so hold on one sec. And I'll just go ahead and take a moment to say that uh, if you do have questions, we will go ahead and answer them as they come up. So put them in the chat, whether it's here on the webinar, whether it's on Facebook, and we'll make sure that we get to them in a timely manner. So as they come, just throw them out there. Awesome. Um, also, I just wanted to share too. So I uh, also um, own a um, company that we just started, consultant consultant C uh, company called School of Holy Trouble. And what we do is we um, we help churches with curriculum and just teaching them about different social justice issues and pretty much just how to be uh, holy troublemakers in their community. Uh, so yeah, this curriculum um, is coming from uh, the School of Holy Trouble. And we actually have a conference coming up in October in Phoenix. Uh, if you are listening, you are more than welcome to come to that. And I will share a little bit more about that later. Uh, but let's get into it. Okay, so our objectives for today is we're going to know what Christian nationalism is, identify Christian nationalism in media and politics, and know what they stand for. And lastly, uh, I hope that we will be able to uh, find ways to uh, fight Christian nationalism. And uh, we'll get to that at the end. So I got this quick little video I'm going to play real quick, and we will go into it. Um, and let me know if y'all can hear this, too. A growing movement led by right-wing politicians is can everyone hear that? challenging a centuries-old oh. value of America's political system, the separation of church and state. Laura Barone Lopez explores the rise of this religious rhetoric and what it means for November's midterm elections. On the ballot this November are a number of high profile Republican candidates who are embracing Christian nationalist ideals. That's a belief that America was founded by and for white Christians and that the government should center its policies on those religious beliefs. Take a listen to these Republican candidates facing voters next month. You can call us extremists. You can call us domestic terrorists. You know who else was called a lot of names his whole life? Jesus. I'm a Christian and I say it proudly. We should be Christian nationalists. The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. So much for this, this myth of separation of church and state. When you look at our platform, it's the only platform out there that recognizes the creator, that recognizes that we have rights that supersede government. We need people all over the country to be willing to put on that full armor of God to stand firm against the left schemes. You'll be met with flaming arrows, but the shield of faith will stop them. Kristen Cobus Dume is a professor at Calvin University who studies the role of Christian nationalism in history and in today's Republican Party. And she joins me now. Kristen, thanks for joining us. The comments that we just heard, how do they espouse Christian nationalist ideals? Really these ideas that America is a special nation, it's, it's God's nation, and thus true patriots, real Americans, are those who would uphold Christian values. And not just any Christian values, but a particularly kind of conservative political understanding of what it is to be a Christian and what it is to be a Christian nation. Where is the origin of what we're seeing as this modern day Christian nationalist movement? Where did it come from? You, know, you can find the idea that America is a Christian nation stretching all the way back through American history in different guises. You could go back to the American Puritans, right, or to the, the Puritans in the 17th century. You could you could hear this kind of rhetoric throughout uh, manifest destiny and so forth. But what we're looking at today really is a modern manifestation that is in the post-war era, really linked with the rise of the Christian right. The idea that Americans uh, have to preserve and actually restore a lost Christian heritage. The idea that something had gone wrong, particularly in the 1970s, that 
secular impulses, that feminism or secular humanism, uh, even in some cases, the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement were seen as disruptive forces. And so the idea was that- All right, we're gonna stop right there. Christians, uh, conservative Christians need- Okay, so pretty much we just got, first of all, we just saw all those uh, political candidates from 2022 um, just spout off some crazy uh, mess. And <laughs> um, I, I, and the reason why I'm, I play that because I need you all to know uh, what is like, this is America. These are, these are the people who are trying to govern our country. And, the the stuff that they're spouting off is just is just wild. So I just wanted you all to to see that. So what is Christian nationalism? Christian nationalism is worldview that claims that the U.S. is a Christian nation, and that the country's laws should be uh, therefore be rooted in Christian values. Christian nationalism isn't just a U.S. issue, but it's also a worldwide issue as well. And mostly today we're going to be talking about is just Christian nationalism in America. But yeah, I also need you all to. Uh, also understand, uh, Christian national Christian nationalism is worldwide. is It's a worldwide thing. Um, it's just here in America. It's really bad. Um, so let's talk about these so-called Christian values. So these so-called Christian values are uh, they're pro-life. They're against abortion. Uh, they believe marriage is between one man and one woman. Uh, they're definitely into this whole thing to the right to bear arms, and they believe that is biblical. Uh, we'll go into that later. Uh, America is for Americans, nobody else. Uh, they're very anti-immigrant. Um, and uh, they believe in protecting America at all costs. That means uh, they definitely believe in uh, militarization, erasing history, erasing history. So right now we're seeing across the country where um, you use, for example, in Florida, uh, Governor DeSantis has now outlawed uh, AP African-American studies. They are trying to erase um, true American history. They're trying to erase uh, storytelling, tr truth telling. Um, they, are, they will protect America at all costs by being xenophobic. Uh, we already mentioned no truth telling. Um, but yeah, these are these Christian values um, that they have. So what does Christian nationalism do to others? And this is why um, Christian, Christian nationalism is a, is a huge threat. Um, and they're doing this through policy, which makes it even scarier. So they're erasing the um, identity of others, um, people who are not white and who are not Christian. Um, wait, hold on. Okay. They are trying to erase the identity of uh, people who are not white and Christian. Uh, so pretty much what that means, we are seeing a, an attempt to, um, by Christian nationalists to um, if you are um, pretty much there is an agenda to take America back from people who look like me, um, who are in uh, relationships that I'm in and things like that. Uh, they are we are seen as uh, evil. We are seen as the devil. And I'm just being real. Um, we are seen as all of these other things, and there, there's an attempt to take America back. Um, uh, Christian nationalism also oppresses others because of their sexual identity. Uh, it fuels white supremacy culture, which can lead to physical harm, um, and it forces their values on others. Uh, we're seeing legislation even um, on a smaller, on a more local level. I forgot which town it was, but I've heard there is like uh, literally there is talks of you can't uh, you can't live in a house with someone you're not married in married to. And I'm like, what that 
that is no we're not doing that <laughs> and the, this is like christian nationalism and, and, and i want to post some numbers here in a minute but um yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm saying all this because this here is like one of the biggest threats to democracy, it is one of the biggest threats to the world, in my opinion. And also, I feel like Christian nationalism is also, um, it's destroying Christianity. It's destroying faith, because this is, this is not Christian. Um, and me personally, I just feel like, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach just a little bit. I ain't going to preach too much, but I, I feel like if Jesus was actually here now, uh, Jesus would probably be saying, what the, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss here, but <laughs> um, Jesus would be saying, what the hell is this? This is not, I never said any of this. Um, you know, real quick, you bring up uh -huh. a really interesting point. And I want to point out, I see somebody with their hand raised, uh, you know, because sometimes we have people who intrude on our spaces and try mm -hmm. to, you know, spew all kinds of things. I'm certainly not I, 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 insinuating that that's what's happening with the person who has their hand raised. But please, Jaron, if you want to say something, please put it in the Q&A or the chat. But real quick, to that point, mm -hmm. Nadim, um, that I, I've been, you know, we've been doing some work on school board stuff because mm -hmm. that's where we're really seeing the rise of Christian nationalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually saw you a month or so ago at Washington Elementary, mm -hmm. and here you are, you know, an ordained minister who was standing alongside us in solidarity because mm -hmm. you don't like what these folks are doing either. But one of the parents in one of the districts that I'm working closely with, here's a woman who was raised in evangelical faith, um, you know, who... Uh, up until about 2015 or so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, had never really questioned any of the things that, you know, she'd been taught her whole entire life. And then as she saw the primaries and the debates and things like that, and the things that were coming out of Donald Trump's mouth, and the fact that he was being embraced by her, you know, her congregation, she was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Now, I don't, I don't have any idea, like who my people are, mm -hmm. because I thought that we would not want this person to be part of our, you know, community. And if, and if he came to us like that, we would have to have conversations with him. Like, Hey, this is how we treat others. And she is truly, she's, she's come a long way on a lot of issues that had been kind of ingrained in her since she was a little kid. And now she's questioning everything. And I actually, I feel really, I feel bad for her because I can see how much it hurts her mm -hmm. because she wants to maintain that faith that she was, that gave her so much solace. And now she just feels like she's been abandoned and she's kind of, you know, just churchless right now. Mm -hmm. And, and then now her faith seems to be coming from her activism, which I love. And, you know, but still I, I was not raised where I went to church every Sunday, but for some people that's really important. Mm -hmm. And, and so she just, she feels like a loss. Mm -hmm. equivalent to like the loss of a friend or a family member you know and you know and actually I also relate to that um you know I think Donald Trump like really opened up that 2016 election it like really opened up a lot of people's eyes um even to myself like um you know I grew up in the black church um for a good majority of my life and when I say the black church um you know that's a um it's more of a culture um, of, you know, Black people congregating, that's, that's the center of our community. Um, but yeah, I grew up um, in the Black church a good majority of my life. And then, you know, when Donald Trump came about, and then I started seeing uh, Black pastors supporting this guy. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute now, wait, this, this, is, no, wait a minute, this is not our faith. This is not, this is not our community, first of all. Because uh, when did we start supporting, you know, openly racist people? Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of people went through a faith crisis during the 2016 election. Uh, it really opened up a lot of people's eyes and um, a lot of people even left the church. I was one of those people. Um, I even left. I said to help this. Um, I actually gave up my credentials um, and I said, uh, you know what? Because uh, I was actually an AME Zion, um, I was an AME Zion minister, and um, I said to hell with this, um, you know, it wasn't even the fact that people was agreeing with Donald Trump, but the fact that we was just standing by and just letting it happen. And I'm like, why are we not saying anything? This guy is one of the biggest threats to this country, our community, 
to the to the world in general. And why are we not saying anything? Why are we not on the front line saying anything? So yeah, I, f- I feel your friend on that going through a faith crisis. Uh, it really helped me to really find um, a good community. Um, actually, when I was in Phoenix, uh, First Church UCC, they definitely helped me with uh, coming back. Uh, and also, like your friend, um, I shared my faith through activism. I'm saying this is this is what Jesus will want, will want. This is the things that Jesus would do. Probably, you know, going banging drums down the street about Black Lives Matter. You know, that's the things that Jesus would do. You know, uh, go up in a in a temple and just clear out the place and just start flipping tables. These are the things that Jesus would do. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go go right back to it. But I just I had to insert and I wanted to let everybody know where to put their questions. So please keep going with your presentation. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. These these are what uh these are the things that Christian nationalism um does through policy. And it it is harmful uh when we have people who are in uh these positions and that they are um they they don't believe in separation between church and state and they're using their um their their position of power. Uh, to impose their ideologies on others. That, my friends, is dangerous. It is very dangerous. And I often say this, uh, Christian nationalisms, Christian nationalists don't have any room to talk about uh, the people, uh, people who are in the Middle East, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, or other terrorist organizations, they they literally have no room to talk about them because they are literally the same thing. You are literally terrorizing other people through policy. You're imposing your views and your beliefs on other people. And that, my friends, is not why America is here. America, uh, uh, the forefathers, forefathers, <laughs> um, they, that was not their intentions uh, for America to be a Christian country. Not at all. Uh, let me go ahead further because there's some other stuff I really want to talk about. Okay, so Christian nationalism, Christian nationalists are on a mission to take back America and make it a Christian nation. They use Christianity to build their base that is rooted in white supremacy. So how do you the 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 best way to uh, to get your base, to rally up your base, and to get them on board with your agenda is by using the agenda. And we have seen that uh, for centuries. Uh, the, the best way, um, I mean, when we look at how, so, how the amount of countries that have been invaded and taken over, they have used religion uh, to do that. And let me just be clear. I believe that religion is a great thing. I, I that's just me. I, I believe religion is a, is a great thing. But when religion is um, being used in a way to harm others, it is not a good thing. Um, and I believe that everything. There's a lot of great things in this world, but um, unfortunately, we have um, men, and I blame men uh, for. Um, uh, for for using great things, um, I often say about Christianity. Christianity, um, you know, a lot of people say that Christianity is a white man's religion. No, not at all. Christianity is actually um, an African religion. It's actually uh, its its earliest traces are found in Ethiopia. Uh, this religion was colonized and then weaponized. Um, uh, against other people, but uh, yes, their this is their goal is to take back America and to make it a Christian nation, which it's not a Christian nation. So let's talk about that. Uh, actually, let's talk about this. Uh, so, man, we have a lot of people who are influencers in the Christian nationalist movement. Uh, one of them, Representative Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene. Um, and this is her quote, we need to be the party of nationalism, and I'm a Christian, and I say it proudly, we should be Christian nationalists. And this is an interview that with uh, Turning Point uh, that she did in Florida. 
Now, this is scary. This is coming from a lawmaker with influence, with who is influencing millions of people. So let's go here. First of all, um, I want to go back to this. America is not a Christian nation. The founding fathers, and let's talk about the founding fathers and the Constitution real quick. So when the Constitution was written, it was based on Christ Christian principles. Um, and actually, let me just say this. I wouldn't even say it was, um, it was founded on Christian principles, more of, more of human rights um, for, for some. <laughs> um, Christianity, uh, the America was not founded as a Christian nation or for any religion. In fact, the First Amendment, um, the First Amendment to the Constitution, to the Constitution states that everyone in the United States has the right to practice their own religion or no religion at all. So our four, so the forefathers um, of different religions and different backgrounds uh, felt that. Uh, the better way to protect the religious freedom of America was to keep the government out of religion. And that's the reason for the First Amendment to the Constitution, and it's to guarantee a separation between church and state. And I literally cannot stress this enough, how important there needs to be a separation between church and state. When there is a separation between church and state, you have Looney Tunes like Marjorie Taylor Greene and other people down at the Arizona legislature. <laughs> um, they use religion in a bad way to oppress others. Um, so this is one reason why there needs to be a clear separation between church and state. Also, if you look at the state of Utah, anybody been to Utah before? Uh, by the way, Utah is one of my favorite states because it's, um, um, it's not as populated and the air is clean out there. But God, it is hard to get a beer out there. Um, and it's hard to do other things out there because um, people are, there is no clear separation between church and state. Uh, so yeah, I have a hard time getting a beer out there and or any drink, um, make it damn near impossible. Um, but yeah, once again, separation between church and state is what's needed for America uh, if we want to, if America really wants to be great, like, you know, you know, like they claim, you know, we want to make America great again or whatever. I don't think America was great in, uh, to begin with. But if we want to make America great, separation between church and state is a must. Hey, so real quick mm -hmm. here. Uh, uh, yeah, we there is. a Yeah, the. Utah is interesting, and I feel like Arizona, just maybe because I think we have the second largest LDS population mm -hmm, here. I mean, mm -hmm. we can just take a look and see the, the law that was upheld that would exempt clergy from reporting child abuse. Yeah, um, okay. and, and, and we're not, that's not unique to the state of Arizona. That mm -hmm. law exists other places, but yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful state, mm -hmm. but the, the, uh, the, the line between church and state that really doesn't exist there is very obvious. Mm -hmm. However, however, um, and I, I, I have a lot of friends who say that actually the gay scene there is pretty lit. It um, is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, and I mean, I think too because you know I've talked to a lot of ex Mormons who, um, you know, being a Mormon first of all, there's a there's a big social safety net there, right? Like for some people, I've known people who have had houses gifted to them, who were mm -hmm. loaned vehicles, you know, who if they were, you know, I had a friend who uh, couldn't afford the insurance as a public school teacher, so his in laws picked up that cost, you know, and a lot of them will just kind of be quiet about the fact that they don't really believe in it just so they don't ruffle any feathers with the family because they want to continue those social safety nets right mm -hmm. um so it's an it's an interesting thing to be a, a jill or a jack mormon but there's a whole bunch of them out there i do have a question coming from howard real quick yeah, yeah. so it's a it's a long comment first okay so howard says i've noticed an odd convergence of extreme right wingers like tucker carlson and marjorie taylor green with anti-war leftists who don't want the U.S. to participate in an endless war in Ukraine. They differ, however, in that leftists call for a ceasefire in Ukraine, while Carlson wants a military focus to shift to the southern border to deter undocumented people from entering the country. 
How do we unite disparate factions to bring peace, stop the war, stop the destruction of Ukraine, and bring the world back from the brink of nuclear war by urging our government to mediate between Russia and Ukraine, rather than, as Noam Chomsky has said, insisting that we fight to the last Ukrainian? Okay, so hold on. You answer this, and I will nominate you for a Nobel Peace Prize. But go ahead, try to tackle that. Ooh, that's uh, that's uh, that's one hell of a question, <laughs> actually. And I've actually noticed that. Um, so you actually do have a lot of uh, anti-war right wingers, um, and, and I'm going to notice something too. Um, and it's probably a very unpopular opinion, um, but actually, Donald Trump. I wouldn't say that he was anti-war. Um, but we saw less military involvement uh, with Trump. Um, and, I, and I'm also just speaking as someone who actually has served in the military. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I was in the military. Um, you know, I was trying to get free college. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, man, that's a really hard question to answer. But yeah, I think there's a... There's definitely some some ways that the left and the right can actually come together on that because they don't believe and they, they and I'm also sharing as someone who is hung out with Republicans. I actually grew up in Marana, Arizona. Um, so, yeah, I know Republican talking points. And let me tell you something. They are very adamant about uh, bringing home the troops and by like not having military in BS. Uh, <laughs> so there is definitely some, some room to bring the left and the right together uh, when it comes to like being anti-war. Man, the whole situation in Ukraine and uh, Russia, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> but I truly, me and me personally, I just feel like, we shouldn't be involved in the whole Russia, Ukraine thing. I just don't believe that we should be involved in any kind of war or we shouldn't be supplying, definitely, definitely shouldn't be supplying countries with weapons. I just, I, I just don't believe that's the solution. We're, um, you know, we have given billions of dollars to, to Ukraine um, for weapons. Meanwhile, we have people that are starving in this country. I mean, I live right down the street from Skid Row. And I got stories to share about Skid Row. I mean, let's do something there first. If we really want to talk about helping people. Uh, let's help our own first. Uh, that is that is a really fair point. And I'm going to say to mm -hmm. Howard, uh, Kirk Alexander, who's in the chat, wants to connect you. But for some reason, Howard, when I try to send you an individual message, I can't. So uh, Howard and Kirk, I'm not sure how you're going to be able to uh, get your messages to each other. Um, but Kirk definitely wants to connect with you regarding your question, Howard. And yeah, uh, Skid Row. I mean, look at the zone here, yeah. right? Look at the zone. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I and the, you know, people like Wadsack and some of these other knuckleheads who are down at the Capitol, they, their solution is to basically just take a blowtorch to the whole area and and just get rid of these people. And in fact, when Ana Hernandez, Senator Ana Hernandez, called the un, she said they are our unhoused neighbors and she had mm -hmm. a point of order called on her because uh, Wadsack said these aren't our neighbors and then she went on to disparage them and call them drug addicts and and all these other things um you know their their, their Christian values right you know don't don't really make a lot of sense but I and, and so I yeah go ahead I'm sorry and, and and that's why I said their Christianity is very selective um they are selective on their Christianity and, th and this is I'm going to go further on this, how to identify a Christian nationalist. Um, but one of the ways how to identify a Christian nationalist, uh, Christian nationalist is uh, you will notice the hypocrisy. Uh, they, you know, one minute they're talking about Christian values, this and that. And then the next minute they're calling in uh, unhoused people, drug addicts and all kinds of other names. Um and, you know, and, and the evangelicals actually came out with this whole WWJD thing, what would Jesus do? And I, I use it in their face. I'm like, really, what would Jesus do? Not call unhoused people drug addicts and, and other names. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, as you can see right here, when we talk, when we hear that, when we hear the, uh, that, uh, uh, Christ, uh, that America is a Christian nation, let's really 
let's really talk about that. Is America really a Christian nation? I mean, these are the things I have listed that America is guilty of. Um, meanwhile, calling itself a Christian nation. I mean, slavery, that's incompatible with the teachings of Jesus. Murder and theft of indigenous people, incompatible. Love of guns, that is totally incompatible with the teachings of Jesus. Racism is incompatible. Xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia. These are all, all things that are incompatible with uh, with the teachings of Jesus. So let's ask ourselves again, is America really a Christian nation? No. Um, and um, I want to go even a little bit further. Should America be a Christian nation? No. It should be a nation for all people to practice their religion or no religion at all. It should be a, um, it should be as inclusive as possible uh, and welcoming as possible to all people. The, these are the things that the founding fathers uh, were, you know, talking about when they um, when they wrote up the Constitution. Uh, to an extent, to an extent, we'll that's a whole another conversation for another day. But yeah, um, America being a Christian nation, no, that's false. It never was, and and it, and it shouldn't be. So yeah, um, let's. The ways to identify a Christian nationalist, mostly white. Uh, but let me just say this. You do not have to be white to be a Christian nationalist. You don't have to be white to be a white supremacist. That's a whole nother conversation for another day. I uh, uh, I have these, I, I try to have these conversations with uh, people in my community and the black community. And I often tell them, hey, a lot of you all uh, while you are black, you're still, um, you know, uplifting uh, white supremacy culture. Um, once again, another conversation for another day. <laughs> um, identifying Christian nationalists, mostly evangelical Christians, Republican or vote Republican. Um, they hold racist views, but won't admit that they're racist. So what does that mean? Um, one of the biggest insults to uh, to a racist is to call them racist. They don't like to be called racist. That's that's a big insult. They, I mean, they will flip out. I don't have a racist bone in my body. I I voted for. Oh oh, I like this one. I voted for Barack Obama during the election. That doesn't make me racist. I have a black friend. My girlfriend is black. <laughs> um. Oh, this is my favorite one. Um. I I watch Tyler Perry movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are these are really these are real things. Yes, you can do all these things. You can watch as many Tyler Perry movies as you want. You can have a black girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and you can still be racist. Uh, identifying a Christian nationalist, uh, homophobic, transphobic, patriotic, patriotic. Uh, look for the matter, the MAGA rhetoric, uh, the Take America Back things. And let me just share this. Uh, this whole uh, MAGA rhetoric that we're seeing, uh, the Take America Back thing, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. I mean, this stuff goes back way even before uh, the era of Ronald Reagan. Um, I'm going to, I'll just share this as a person who grew up in a very religious house. Uh, I had to watch TBN a lot. Um, if you all don't know what TBN, that's Trinity Broadcasting Network, uh, it's it's absolutely horrible. <laughs> it is um, it was a it's a Christian broadcasting channel, and um, you know, growing up, I used to see a lot of the things that were. Um, I used to hear a lot of stuff that was spoken from uh, Pat Robertson and uh, Rod Parsley, Benny Hinn, T.D. Jakes, and. And now everybody's flipping out about Christian nationalism now. And I'm like, this is nothing new. I've been hearing this stuff. I've been hearing about Take America Back and uh, all this rhetoric that we're hearing right now. I've been heard all this stuff. And back when I was like six. <laughs> um, also, let me just share this. Uh, identifying the Christian nationalists. Uh, they're biblical literalists. So they take the Bible literally. Like every word. And the Bible is not to be taken literally. It's, it should be taken seriously, but not literally. Um, and I'm quoting um, 
quote one of my mentors, Bishop uh, uh, Carlton Pearson, uh, the Bible should be taken seriously, not literally. Uh, so usually what they do is they take, um, they twist scripture to support their ideology. And, uh, and often their ideology is not based on Christian, it's not based on biblical uh, facts or, or, or scripture. Uh, a lot of it is actually based on conspiracy theory. So yeah, they're using the Bible incorrectly. Uh, they don't know how to use the Bible. They don't know how to read it. They don't know how to uh, properly, um, uh, yeah, they, it's, 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 it's all bad. Well, and so this mm -hmm. this uh, this newfound uh, friend of mine who is showing up to her local school board meeting and really does know scripture like the back of her mm -hmm. hand, she was you know telling me last night how frustrated she is because we have a board member in the West Valley and Peoria Unified School District who you know insists on quoting scripture for every meeting, mm -hmm. but she cuts it. You know, she takes the pieces that she wants, mm -hmm. and she came to me last night and was like, "I'm so frustrated because." They're not like, okay, like that's actually lovely scripture that you chose, but you chose it and twisted it and it gets presented as that's like the word of God or whatever. But, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the thing they, they, you know, they'll use the old Testament to, you know, justify their Christianity and, and, and it's, and it's, it's nice. So I wasn't raised uh, knowing the Bible and it's always nice when I know people who can just kind of like, you know, pick a scripture, pick mm -hmm. a, a quote from the Bible um, and so, you know, if that's what we need to do for this person who's on the board, then that's what we'll do is we'll just get better scripture or we'll just, you know, quote Song of Solomon and make them all really uncomfortable, you know. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm actually going to share a little bit more about that um, in this presentation, um, how we um, well, I'll share a little bit about that. But let me let me just share Back this to you. Yeah, let me, let me just share this, too. Uh, uh, while we're talking about scripture especially when we was at the um we was at the uh uh at the school board meeting um so many oh my god my I was just itching uh because they was using the story of Sodom and Gomorrah totally out of context talking about um uh this is a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah and uh that the homosexual is this and homosexual homosexual is that let me tell you, the story about Sodom and Gomorrah has nothing to do with homosexuality. It was actually about hospita hosp hospitality. Uh, God was pissed off about people being in, um, uh, not being hospitable. That's what pisses God off, not homosexuality. Actually, homosexuality is not even mentioned in the Bible. But that's a whole nother conversation for another day. Uh, and I'm going to tell you how to research uh, research that. But listen, Christian nationalism is dangerous as hell. Their policies will get people killed. And I'm not trying to be an alarmist, but I'm trying to get you all to like really understand and like really take this seriously. Their policies will get people killed. Um, when we talk about um, abortion bans, abortion bans will get people killed. Their policies about guns is getting people killed. I mean, we're seeing schools being shot up almost daily because of their love for guns. And they're using the Bible to back that up. No, no, what? what? No, it's getting people killed. Um, Christian nationalism is dangerous because it can undo progress that is being made. There is so much progress that is being made across the country when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to LGBT, uh, QI rights and to, um, and so many advancements in the black community and so many advancements in immigration laws. But what we're seeing is when these people get elected to office and, um, and there's no separation between church and state is actually undoing progress has been made. And bills, as easily as they can get signed into office, they can easily be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They can easily be- uh, uh, Implemented? Yes, yes, and yes. And they can also, how many times have we seen um, attempts to uh, repeal uh, Obamacare? 
There's been several attempts to appeal, to appeal Obamacare. So the same way that Obamacare was uh, implemented, they can easily be repealed like, like that. So that's why we got to stay on our toes. We got to vote. We got to be civically engaged at all times. There is no off years at all. Um, we have to show up in all spaces at all times and like really double down on these people because they're doubling down on us. Real history will be erased. Um, real American history is being erased to, to this day. And right now we are seeing these Christian nationalists, they, uh, they believe that uh, we shouldn't be divided. And that when we talk about races, divides people up and this and that. Really all this is, is a bunch of fragile white people who are fragile <laughs> and they don't like to, um, they don't like hearing um, how America has been harmful uh, to indigenous people. They don't like to hear the truth that America has been harmful to black people. They don't like to hear the truth that America has just been harmful in general. Uh, so when we, we're, we're seeing now uh, real history being erased now where uh, the word slave in certain states, they are looking at taking the word slaves out of textbooks and now calling us volunteers. Uh, volunteers. We, we voluntarily came to America to help build America. Uh, what? No. <laughs> so real American history is being erased. Um, and, 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 you know, when we talk about upholding uh, Christian values, isn't lying uh, a sin? That's what this is. We're, we're lying. They are lying. Um, <laughs> lastly, Christian nationalism is dangerous because it is spiritually violent. Uh, spiritual violence is something that is real. Um, it does harm people, um, and it can hurt people uh, mentally and physically. And I'm telling you something I know for myself. Spiritual violence is real. It um, When one has a platform to spew all kind of garbage from the pulpit or using their platform, it can, it can, har it can harm others. So I want you to look at these numbers real quick. Um, this is from a Pew Research Center poll that was just recently done last year. 45% of Americans uh, believe that um, America should be a Christian nation. 45%. Do you think the US should be a Christian nation? 45%. While there is 51% that says no, the fact that there is 45% that says yes, that is still scary. That's a lot of people. And here's the thing. This base is growing. It is growing. They are getting a lot of attention. They have a lot of power. That 45%, they have a lot of power. And they also have a lot of money. So when we have power and money, I really need us to take this seriously. Like it, we're America is is headed in a in a really bad direction if we don't get a hold of Christian nationalism. Um, I got some other numbers here. Um, I'm actually going to I want to send. Is there a way I can? Oh, after okay. after this, maybe I can email you a link so everyone can get the a uh, link to this uh, Pew uh, research poll. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I like because we do talk a lot of people who are monitoring this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We we've definitely seen some of these numbers. I know mm -hmm. probably a lot of people on our call today were just at the American Atheist Conference, where again some mm -hmm. of the presenters there were sharing these. But please, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can go ahead and share it with Lindsay. I do have a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Lindsay, so the so I've got a question from Howard and he says my wife who is black has been very disappointed with black churches when the pastor has turned from inspiring words of faith in her view to taking against same-sex marriage while the black churches are generally black affirming with great music um, mm -hmm. what will it take to bring them to a level of full solidarity with the LGBTQ plus communities I know they're not a monolith 
But mm -hmm. in your opinion, from probably a lot of interactions with various different congregations of Black churches, mm -hmm. what's your take on that question? That's yeah, a yeah, question. that's actually a really good question. Um, that is something um, I'm actually dealing with right now. That's my primary focus on, um, the, you know, the Black church is a very, it's a, it's a great institution. You know, a lot of the, the civil rights move, a lot of the thing, things in the civil rights movement were actually birthed out of the Black church. But at the same time, yes, we are still holding on. Uh, we still uphold white supremacy culture um, by. We have not been welcoming to the uh, to the LGBTQIA community. Um, and here's the thing. I, I think right now the black church is going through a um, it's going through a time of evolving and. And from and this is just from what I'm seeing, the conversations that I'm having with several different Black denominational leaders and uh, different uh, leaders in the Black church, um, they are seeing the hypocrisy. They are seeing how we have been loud about racism and we have been uh, on the front lines uh, combating racism, but we have also been homophobic. We have also had our hands in homophobia and those are two, and I, this is what this is a term I use. Uh, homophobia and racism are, are the same devil. They are the same. Uh, they're the same evil. Um, in any is uh, racism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, all that. It's sexism. It's all the same evil. And so I, I feel like the black church right now is uh, they are seeing that. Now they're at a point where what do we do now? Because we have been taught that homosexuality is a sin so long, scripture says um, that uh, homosexuality is a sin, but so what do we do now? So right now, I feel like the Black church is, is having a time of, uh, of owning itself, and it's also doing a time of studying. The AME church, uh, the African Methodist Episcopal church, uh, one of the first Black denomination in America now has a commission to study human sexuality. That is major. Um, they are the first Black denomination in the country to start to actively um, study human sexuality. Um, and this commission right now, um, they are, the AME church is looking at becoming uh, an all-inclusive denomination for all people. So when I say the black, there, there is hope for the black church. Now, when, when good things like that happens, you have a lot of people in institutions, they are, they are going down kicking and screaming. <laughs> so you're going to have a lot of pushback. Um, there's a lot of pushback in the black church as well, especially from black Pentecostals um, who are now going full force <laughs> um, in saying, you know, homosexuality and being transgender is a sin and they don't like where America is going and all this. And I'm like, okay, wonderful. You're on the side of white supremacists. Thank you for letting us know. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully that answers that. Yeah, and I just want to, uh, we do have about six minutes. I'm willing to go over time with you. Oh, yeah, um, me too. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, if you want to, if you want to, because I think you see, you know, you got another video. We do have another question here that I'm also super curious about, but I want you to at least be able to finish your slideshow presentation. But with regards to the numbers, I do feel like these are probably things that our, our members have seen before. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and um, I'm a numbers guy. I like seeing numbers. Um, I just shared those numbers with uh, some of my colleagues in the Black church. Uh, actually, I don't know if you just saw, actually, let me go back real quick. I just want to, since we're talking about the Black church real quick, I just wanted to, uh, if you all see this Black Protestant right here, um, look at this here. 65% of Black Protestants believe that America should be a Christian nation. That's very alarming. Listen to this. Um, oh, no, this is not the right one. There, if you look into this pew, there's like a large number of Black Protestants uh, who have never heard of the term Christian nationalism. That is frightening. Uh, so um, I'm scolding my colleagues. I'm like, what the hell are you teaching in these churches? 
where our people don't know what Christian nationalism is <laughs> and why they believe that America should be a Christian nation. So let me go, to, let's get to the good parts. How do we fight Christian nationalism? Educating other Christians about Christian nationalism. Um, you know, I often say, how do, uh, I, you know, I, during George Floyd, I was always asked, how can I, as a white person, um, uh, you know, help fight racism? And I say, well, you go back to other white people and tell them that they're wrong and that they're racist and that they shouldn't be racist. Um, at Thanksgiving, when your uncle starts uh, saying racist stuff at the table, you check them um, right there on spot. It's the same thing with Christians. We have to do the same thing. When we start, when, when, when my people, because these are still my people, <laughs> when Christians are out here uh, uh, spouting off dumb stuff, I have a moral duty to check them just like that. There's no if, ands, or buts, or let them go. Um, I check them immediately. Uh, and it takes courage to do that. And we got to have courage to do that. Um, let me just share a quick story real quick. Uh, our um, The AME Zion Church just had our uh, Board of Bishops meeting um, in February in Los Angeles. And one of our bishops, uh, he just started saying some pretty transphobic stuff. Um, the bishop got checked. <laughs> I'll just say that he got checked because uh, we just don't play that. Uh, listen, biblical hermeneutics is important. Use of scripture to debunk their hateful ideology is uh, is is key. So th this is a major one here. And um, it doesn't matter what your faith is or if you have no faith or whatever. I think it is important that we equip ourselves um, with some uh, biblical knowledge uh, to debunk the BS that they're saying. And I'm going to share a little bit how to do that. Um, there's a book I want you all to order. Um, but yeah, biblical hermeneutics is important. Um, so many, so, so uh, a lot of scripture has been used out of context. Um, is uh, poor, uh, poor studying of scripture, um, using, the biblical, using the Bible literally. And I think it's just very important that in our messaging, when we hear people say that, uh, and I'm using this for example, when we hear people, actually, let me use this for example. When we hear people say that uh, abortion is a sin, I think it's very important that we go to, um, I believe it's in Leviticus, uh, where uh, God actually gives instructions to a priest, to priests on how to carry out mis miscarriages if a woman cheats on her husband. Abortion is in the Bible. It is actually sanctioned by God. A lot of Christians don't know that. Um, I, I got this book at the, the Freedom from Religion Foundation conference uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years back, and it's great. And it, you know, it's basically an argument. It, it has Bible quotes, scripture for everything that the evangelical, you know, white nationalists try to tell you is in the Bible. Yes. And and so it's easy to use as far as for some, especially for somebody like me mm -hmm. who wasn't raised with this mm -hmm. it, it helps I, re I reference this quite a bit i'd love to have uh every uh legislator in the arizona senate and house have one of these delivered to their yes. doorstep as well as the constitution by the way because clearly they do not understand the constitution no they so. don't at all yeah. <laughs> uh, just like the bible they pick and they they uh use the constitution out of context um i have to get that book i need that <laughs> is it on uh amazon a good book. Okay. You know I, what? I want to say I know for sure that the American Atheist uh, website has it for sale. So okay. I I would I would definitely check I'll it out. Definitely get it on there because yeah. I would, and see and I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a um, a Bible nerd. Um, I like to um, I like to like really dig deep into stuff. Um, you know, all my life I was been told you need to study the Bible. You need to study the Bible, study, study, show your show thyself approved, and all that other stuff. Well, I studied, and now I'm a heretic. 
<laughs> I'm now classified as a heretic. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, um, definitely no um, scripture to debunk the BS that they're saying. And listen, uh, we must unite all people, all faiths, uh, no matter their background. Um, I'm glad to be with you all as, as a, a secular organization. This is what unity looks like when a Christian could come into your space. And, um, and um, if anybody has been to, um, hasn't heard of, well, probably not, but I had a church in Phoenix, Arizona called Ebenezer Church. Oh man, uh, I sparked a lot of outrage when I said that atheists and agnostics are welcomed in this church and that they could serve here. Um, but you know what, we need unity. This is how we make America great, by coming together to make the world a better place. And I just feel like we should all come together. Uh, there are so many Christian organizations that, you know, they badmouth atheists and all this. I'm like, you know what? We need our atheist friends to, to make the world a better place. And I feel like you all need us, um, the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> the good one so true it really yeah. is because you know we uh we need to show solidarity again yeah, because it's really it's it's really not about our faith our you yeah. know just like just like all of these people now you know they're the, the trans coming from last night's board meeting and trans mm -hmm. issues and blah 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 and like mm -hmm. they try to use their faith to say this is why we don't like trans folks like we can it's not about our faith it's about our moral compass you know and and it's about that golden rule idea that kind of you know umbrellas every single religion in the world right how would i want to be treated well i would want to be treated you know i would treat my neighbor the way that i would want to be Absolutely. treated basically you know what i mean and so this this idea of grounding in and it's it's almost like a culture of i'm going to be right about you know i want to i want to win it's not mm -hmm. even about being right it's like i want to win this argument yep. it's not about what's right it's about like well my side tells me that i need to believe in this so i'm going to believe in this and and i'm going to make you lose yep. that's not what it's about it's about just treating other people the way that we would want to you know when i was on the school board one of the most controversial things that we did when we created our um profile of an mm -hmm. ideal student and and our mission and vision one of the things that we put in there was that in our district we would love each child as our own mm -hmm. and boy the people they were like mm, I'm never gonna love a student the way I love my own and and, I, and I'm just like well why not because I I love my students you know and right. I just don't understand why you would have that separation. I'm going to love my student as if they were my own, because that means that I'm going to advocate for them the same way that a parent who loves their child very much would do. Because for some of my kids, their parents were busy. Yep. You know, they're working two, three jobs or, you know, it's grandma who's got other cousins and other kids to take care of and medical appointments and stuff. So absolutely, I'm going to love my students the way I love my own. But man, the people on that committee, some of them were like, mm -mm, we're not going to do that. And I'm like, that's where you're going to draw the line. Yeah. it's And, it, and to me, it's weird. It's like, I don't, I don't know. It's just very weird. Um, I was just telling someone, uh, Jesus actually did not come down to tell us what to believe. Jesus actually, his whole goal was to, um, was pretty much teaching us how to be ethical people, was teaching ethics, not what to believe, how to believe. And this whole, and when, you know, and one of the reasons why I say deconstructing our theology, uh, Christians must deconstruct our theology. You know, we have a theology where it tells us we need to win souls, that we need to get people saved. This uh, we need to, how, did, how many souls did you get saved? Did you, did you get 500 souls saved? Is that kind of rhetoric of winning is why Christianity is actually losing and why America in general is losing? It's because our theology is all jacked up. Yeah, I mean, even after I made my comments uh, last night, you know, some uh, little Regina George came up to me and said, Jesus loves you. And I said, I said, I, I appreciate that, sweetheart, but I don't believe in Jesus. And her mother was aghast. And she was like, don't you tell my daughter that. 
And then I was, and I was like, sorry, I just don't need her blessing. I'm good without God. And so when I went out to the parking lot, by the way, there were cops there. People were yelling at me as I was leaving, you know, the good Christians. And, um, and he said, do you, you know, do you need an escort? And I had a young man with me, Elijah. And, and, and we were like, no, we're good. We went out there and they're praying. And I get, and I, and I thought, are they praying for me or themselves? And my friend who was raised in evangelical faith said, oh, I guarantee they were praying for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and I was like okay that's great you know whatever but like instead she could have just come to me and said you know what I heard you say some really disturbing numbers about sexual abuse in the church and I'd like to learn more about that but no that wasn't that wasn't what they wanted to do they wanted to have this performative action where they were going mm -hmm. to you know pray over my soul you know and I get constantly accused of being possessed by demons, Satan worshiper and the jokes on them. Oh, we're in the same boat. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't even believe in Satan. So it's just futile on their part. Oh, I, me neither. And again, we are over time. I appreciate everybody for hanging out, but I can see that we still have 20 people here. So that's good. And this is a question that I had too, because you brought up the second amendment and the Christian rights obsession with guns. So can we talk about like how, like this gun culture is somehow how they how can how can uh, these evangelicals justify their obsession their enamoration of guns and and actually think that Jesus would have taken up an AR15 or supported these the 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 lack of action the inaction that's happening in the United States when it comes to gun violence yeah 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 about that yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Actually, um, my class, we was just discussing this. Um, so there are there are scriptures used to support uh, carrying weapons. And um, once again, scripture used way out of context. I mean, it is so ridiculous, especially when we talk about guns. It is so ridiculous how they use it out of context. I'm like, really? That's the scripture that you use to back up? your um your obsession with guns and it's so bad like we have uh evangelicals even say if jesus had an ar-15 he wouldn't have gotten crucified what what like that even goes against your theological your basic theological beliefs didn't jesus have to go to the cross in order to save humanity so you saying that if Jesus had an AR-15, uh, your salvation wouldn't be here. So it is it, so ridiculous the the scriptures and the things that they uh, that they say to bat guns. Um, and I want you all to please. Uh, so the book right here, Christians Against Christianity, is a book for everyone to read. Um, and it's how the right wing evangelicals are destroying our faith and our nation. And this is written by uh, Dr. Aubrey Hendricks, who is a um, he is a AME minister. Um, he's a scholar. And he really in each chapter, he calls out and debunks uh, different issues that the uh, evangelicals are talking about. He has a whole chapter on guns um, and it's. If we're talking about like equipping ourselves to be to counter the rhetoric uh, from the right, this is a good book to read. Um, but yeah, the whole thing about guns is is freaking wild. Um, I think everyone can attest that Jesus was he taught nonviolence. That was that was the foundation of his ministry. Um, but yeah, <laughs> nonviolence, and I mean if. if if I were to gander, I would say he was probably a socialist. And the oh, interesting, absolutely. the interesting thing that I find, because now I'm starting to do research on some of these, um, you know, faith-based institutions like the Arizona Christian University mm -hmm. that with the ADF has filed a lawsuit against Washington Elementary, uh, them, uh, this Tipping Point USA uh, private school, all mm -hmm. of these new like popping up private schools that are getting my taxpayer dollars at many times have them in, in their statement of faith that that the person who's signing it has to accept that capitalism is the greatest form of government on the planet, which I'm just like, how, where did the jump, like Jesus flipped the tables and, you know, like, I don't understand that leap 
from, you know, Jesus, the socialist, which I think we all, most of us can probably agree he was. Yeah, right? yeah. Or, or I even mean, an, right there in the text. <laughs> yeah, or an anarchist even. Yeah. He wasn't a capitalist. No. Like, so, I mean, he wasn't even libertarian. Like, whatever things that they're trying to come up with to say he that was he was. houseless. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I'm sorry, we can't call him our unhoused neighbor because you know. Yeah. Um. <laughs> is is and once again, is people using Christianity, they're using religion in general, um, to build their base, to this is how this is how they get people on board with their ideology. Mm -hmm. If you if you mix a little Jesus into it, it will sell. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the, That's the, American the, politics. The Georgia gubernatorial candidate, her uh, bus on the side, she lost her primary, but it said Jesus guns babies. And I yep. mean, that's why as an English teacher, English is uh, grammar is very important. So Kirk wants to point out that his question about guns specifically was about whether Christian nationalism. And I think this would be a good place for us to stop mm -hmm. um, because it is over time. But his question is, you know, is Christian nationalism a culture based on fear? Oh, absolutely. It's definitely based on fear. Um, and they are using, uh, they're using uh, faith to, to, uh, uh, to fear monger. And this is how uh, pretty much, and also, listen, if you, if you tell people uh, that these people are going to hell for, for doing X, Y, Z, of course, I'm going to be on board with the, your messaging. If you tell me that the transgender people and and the homeless are are evil people and that they're going to hell, and if you support them, you're going to hell. Yeah, I'm going to get on board with your message mm -hmm. because you're using fear. Um, me personally, I got saved at the age of seven because I was told I was going to go to hell. If you use fear and religion. You got them. And that's what the that's what Christian nationalists are doing. That's what the right is doing. They're using fear. This is why so many people are voting for Trump. They and you know what? Here, and here's the thing. I really believe that these a lot of these people, they know that the things that they are saying is not actually biblical. Mm -hmm. But because their pastors believe it, and because the people that are in a leadership believe it and are saying it. They're going along with it. And what they're really having is they're really having a spiritual crisis. They just don't want to admit it, but they're in a spiritual crisis themselves. Um, and I, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. <laughs> well, that sounds to me like you just said, you'll be willing to come back anytime that we want to talk to you about oh, the rise of white Christian nationalism and how, how actual Christian faith leaders can take a role in combating that fear, that hatred, that otherizing, you know, that demonization of other people. They're even doing it now. I don't know if anybody's noticing. I hope they are, but they're doing it with our, um, you know, disabled community. Yesterday in the um, state Senate here in Arizona, there was, I believe it was the state Senate. It was a big debate about the funding and the oversight of the Arizona School for the Deaf and Blind. I have seen some of these hate preachers mm -hmm. uh, that Hemet Meta, the friendly atheist, posts all the time about how, um, you know, uh, the reason why you have anxiety or depression or whatever is because you have demons and you yeah. just need to pray. What a dangerous thing to say to somebody with mental illness mm -hmm. or with disabilities and and I mean, you know, there was a recent example that Hement posted on his, uh, you know, uh, friendly atheist page about this woman who went to some, you know, uh, snake oil salesman, circus tent preacher saying that he regrew three of her toes. And people said, OK, age of uh, information, where where's the video of that? And both of them refused to post it. And <laughs> it's just like, what? Because it so, never happened. <laughs> it never happened. But, you know, enough of those people feel like uh, maybe it could happen. So I better, you know, I better give more money. I better mm -hmm. pray harder. I mm -hmm. better hate the trans. I better hate the gays. I better, mm -hmm. you know, buy more guns, whatever it is that they think that their straight white American Jesus wants them to do. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so, this is this is how this is how you build the base. <laughs>
So, and, and, and like you said, I think the base is dwindling. They're afraid, they're scared. They're now just throwing spaghetti at the wall to, to, to try to get people to believe. You are somebody who shows up at every occasion to fight for the common good and fight for social justice. I'm so glad. I mean, we miss you here in Arizona, by the way, just so you know. Um, <laughs> but I, I do appreciate the fact that you come back and that you came back to support uh, the Washington L Board and Tamilia Valenzuela specifically. And I know that you'll continue to stay connected. So is there anything that we need to watch out for you and, and the work that you're doing and how can we support the good work that you're doing? Yeah, yeah. So All Souls Movement, the organization I founded, uh, we're going to be doing some work in Arizona uh, this year. So yeah, I'm going to be coming back and forth to Arizona. Um, we are actually going to be um, we're, we're actually going to be working on reparations work in Arizona. Uh, I think uh, Governor Hobbs is doing a great job, and she's been um, signing some great executive orders. Um, so I, I, I'm a firm believer, and I'm not just saying this because I'm Black, but it's time for Black people to get what's owed to us. Um, we have been uh, marginalized for, since we have gotten here. We have slavery, Jim Crow, new Jim Crow, all of that. Um, and there's been no apology by America. There's been no reparations for the things that have, that have happened to our community. Uh, so right now, while many states and municipalities are uh, putting together reparations commissions, we think it's possible that Arizona can have a reparations commission. So yeah, I hope, uh, hope you all can uh, help us when we start rolling out some more stuff. And um, we hope to have Governor Hobbs to sign a executive order to establish a commission to study reparations proposal proposals for African Americans in Arizona. Well, and I'll tell you what, if you uh, have wind of any kind of legislative, you know, like, you know, the Koch Foundation puts forward and Alec put forward model legislation for the GOP. If you have any of that kind of stuff that you think that we would be able to support, I feel like um, the legislative session in 2024 will be an opportunity for all of us uh, to promote our good ideas. We all know that they won't get a hearing nine times mm -hmm. out of 10, unless, you know, some sanity is restored, but it'll be a good opportunity for us to highlight the good work that we're trying to do as we get ready for the 2024 election. So as Absolutely. that comes across your desk, then let us know and we'll do everything we can to support you. Okay, Redeem? Absolutely. Elections matter. <laughs> Sure enough. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. I think that Reverend uh, Robinson, you really provided us with a little bit of hope today. It's not always hopeful when we have these conversations, but you are, are doing the work and, and I just appreciate you. And again, you're going to be coming back. So we'll see. Yes, you yes. And I'm, um, I will be sending this presentation over to you. Please email it out and, um, and any other links. Okay. Sounds good. Take care, Redeem. Have a great Thank weekend. You. All right. Bye-bye.